At the time of recording this video, my ProZooms plugin for Final Cut Pro has over 3,950 downloads. Thank you everyone who has supported the channel by picking up this plugin, and I'm super excited to announce that I am officially dropping ProZooms Update 2.0. This is a completely free update to anyone who previously purchased ProZooms, and of course anybody who purchased it from now on will continue to get free updates forever. First, let's start off with the quality of life improvements, and then a little bit later I'll jump into the brand new tools. The first quality of life improvement you might notice is that I have updated the icons. This just makes them a little bit more readable and easier to find inside of your browser. Another quick quality of life improvement is that I've gone in and updated a lot of the UI elements to make them just a little bit easier to read over here inside of your inspector. Additionally, at the bottom, I've added this new checkbox, and if you click help video, this is going to give you a QR code. If you scan that QR code, it will bring you to a video that showcases exactly how to use ProZoom. It's going to jump to the exact part of the video showcasing how to use whatever tool you're looking at, so this can hopefully make your life a little bit easier. I've also gone through and done some major under the hood changes for ProZooms, and what that means is now the animation will no longer end before the end of the title, it's going to end exactly at the end of the title. What I mean by that is previously with ProZooms, when it would zoom out, it would end somewhere around in here if you happen to speed up the zoom. But now it's always going to end on that last frame regardless of what speed you set here on the right side. So I can speed this up a lot and it's again going to end on that last frame or we can extend it out and it will still end on that last frame. It's a minor thing, but it's something that's bothered me for a long time with ProZooms and I'm super excited that I finally got that resolved. And the last but most major quality of life improvement for ProZooms is it no longer requires a separate tool for vertical and square formats. You'll notice here in my browser that I no longer have all of the different social media formats because ProZooms will auto conform to each and every different aspect ratio. This again took a massive undertaking of reworking everything under the hood. So I'm super excited because this is going to have some massive workflow improvements for all of you. With that said, if you've previously purchased ProZooms and used the social media variations, you're gonna wanna keep those installed. That's so that you don't break any of your old projects that might have used that title. So unfortunately, you'll see all of those old titles sitting here at the bottom, but just know that you don't need to touch them at all. With all of the quality of life stuff out of the way, it's time to take a look at what's brand new. I'll go ahead and apply ProZooms down on my timeline. And if we take a look here on the right side, you'll notice that we have this position transition and rotation transition. This just allows us to change what kind of easing we have for our zoom. This was in a previous version of ProZooms, but now we can select it. We'll have a whole bunch of variations here. And at the bottom, you'll notice this custom mix. And I'll do the same for rotation transition. And just underneath that is this custom type selection. So right now it is set to flow for one second. And if we push play, you'll notice that we have this really dynamic looking zoom. I can go ahead and adjust the position on this. Let's adjust the rotation in the bottom right corner. And again, if we push play, you can just see how that zoom looks so nice. Additionally, if you wanna slow it down, we could go ahead and select flow for two seconds. So now it's a little bit slower, or we could set it down to just a half a second Additionally, I have some linear options down here at the bottom. So if we want just a linear zoom, we can push play and you'll notice that that has removed all easing altogether. So you might be wondering why it's called custom mix. This is due to a large bug I ran into while building out this plugin that always crashed Final Cut Pro instantaneously. So hopefully in the future, this menu will be shrunk down quite a bit and you won't have quite so many options here because right now they don't actually offer all that much variability. They'll either affect the beginning of the animation or the end of the animation. And so the only ones you need to know about are really ease in and out, accelerate, decelerate, or custom mix. Other than that, I wouldn't bother touching the other options. So not only has the flow zoom been added to pro zooms, but it's also been added to pro pan. So you can get some really dynamic motion around the screen. But now it's time to get into some of the brand new tools I've just implemented. So the first of these is the new Pro Multi Pan. So something that always frustrated me previously with the Pro Pan tool is I would add in one pan. Let's say we want to zoom in here on the Husky's face. And then let's say I want to pan to another part. I'll go ahead and just click and drag this underneath the previous Pro Pan 
move forward a bit, go to the left side, do whatever we need to do. And this wasn't too bad, but I just hate having all these layers stacking up inside of Final Cut Pro. This can hurt performance, this slows down your workflow and just clutters up your timeline. So I'm super excited to show off Pro Multi Pan. If you're planning on panning around a lot on your screen, you can just apply this down on the timeline and you'll see that it gives me two control points. If you're having a hard time telling which control point is which, we can go ahead and enable show A, B. And so that just clearly indicates which one is doing what. Just make sure when you go to export your project that you go ahead and disable this. Otherwise the A and B will show up in the final render. So if I push play, you'll see that Pro Pan just slides over to the right side wherever Pro Pan B is. And let's say I want to actually slide this down to the bottom left. Maybe we want to zoom in quite a bit something like that. Then from there, let's say I want to pan to a different part of my video. I'll go ahead and trim this down. I'll push option, click and drag, and then we can go ahead and change the direction. So right now it's set to A to B. Let's change it over to B to A. So we've essentially reversed that animation and it'll go back to the A point. So now all we need to do is adjust where A is. I'll go ahead and scale that way up. And then if I wanted to do a third variation, I can push option, click and drag, and then we'll change the direction type from B to A over to A to default. So this will just slide it back to how it was originally. So now we can move in just like so, then we'll do an additional zoom in, and then we'll just zoom right back out to where our default state is. This just gives you a whole bunch of quick control for how you wanna pan around multiple parts of the screen. But on top of that, I even added in some nice rotation features. So not only can you rotate along the Z axis, which we'll do just like so, but we can also expand out the rotation and rotate along the Y axis. So we can get some 3D dimensionality to this. We can also rotate on the X axis. So it's up to you how you want this and then we could enable depth of field. So I'll drag the depth of field amount up and you'll notice that we're getting this nice blur over here on the left side. We can adjust the focus offset if we want to, the near focus and far focus and just a whole bunch of other controls. So if we push play, we now have this nice dynamic rotating animation, which is super handy and we just have super easy controls here on the screen. But then at the very bottom, you'll notice that I have the option of adding in a background. So I can disable that if I want to, or I can enable it. We can change the color type over to just a regular color. We can adjust the opacity on that. And the reason why that's important is if we wanted to show the source. So this is the original video lying underneath and we can go ahead and hide that color opacity if we wanted to, but we can also adjust the blend mode on this color. So if we wanted to set it to screen or something along those lines, then you can choose how much you want to blur that backdrop you can adjust how much opacity is on that backdrop, and you can of course adjust the position and rotation and scale. So that is a look at Pro Multi Pan, but this last tool is the one that I am the most excited about. I'm sure you've seen all of the time in my tutorials when I'll pop in and zoom on a specific item on screen, or maybe there's just something you wanna showcase extra close. Previously, I would do this with shape masks and it was a tedious process, but now, we can use Pro Focus. To use Pro Focus, we'll just drop this down on the timeline like any other plugin, and you'll immediately notice that I have two on-screen controls here. So I can go ahead and click and adjust where we are zooming in on the screen. So let's say we want to zoom in on the Husky's head. Then from there, I can scale up this secondary box as much as I want. We can slide it left or right. We could even go in and adjust this zoom boost and then kind of offset it like so. We can adjust the shape of this. So I'll go ahead and set this to a circle. You can choose whether it's symmetrical or not. It's editor Dylan. I look tired. I've been working on this for a long time. I tried to add that cool symmetrical feature to this plugin, but for some reason, no matter how hard I try, it just breaks every single export in Final Cut Pro. So unfortunately I had to remove that feature Maybe someday that bug will get squashed and I can add it back in. That's why you see it there. Unfortunately, it's not working right now, so sorry. So if you don't want it to be symmetrical, now I can adjust just the width and have kind of an oval shape. We can adjust the outline. So let's go ahead and drag up the width on that. Let's maybe set it to an orange color. We could change the blend mode on that to overlay. We could sharpen it up and we can even blur the background. If I wanna blur beyond this 100 mark, we could do that and just click directly on it. And we could also darken the background and increase the opacity on that. Maybe change it over to a teal color and we could even change the blend mode on that. 
that to overlay. So now if I push play, notice all of the powerful animations taking place automatically for us, giving us this great cutout on this Husky's head. So this is super powerful and easy to use. I can just slide it around wherever I need to on the screen. Sometimes I'll use it as a split screen effect. You can enable or disable the build-in animation if you want to and then have it zoom back out like so. And not only do all of these tools come as a title variation, but they also come as an effects variation. And the reason why this is so powerful is sometimes you only wanna manipulate one item on the screen, so you can go in and apply it just as an effect here. Or sometimes you want to affect everything on the screen and that's where you'll apply it as a title. So I have gone through and tried to think of whatever an editor might possibly need when they are zooming in on the screen and I'm just so excited for the release of ProZooms 2.0. Now here is the last important piece of information you need to know. Previously with ProZooms, it was set at $24.99. But with all these powerful brand new updates, plus a massive reworking under the hood, I'm going to do a permanent price increase on ProZooms. So, if you want to get it at its initial launch price of $24.99, this is going to be the last week to do so. After this week, it's going to be increasing to $39.99, so make sure you get it at this amazing sale price. If you previously purchased ProZooms, I have just sent out an email with instructions on how to get the download. If you did not receive that download email, just follow the instructions in the pinned comment and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. If you're interested in more about what ProZooms can do in Final Cut Pro, you can watch this video where I break it all down, showcasing how to do slow zooms and pans and all sorts of other effects. If you're excited about this update, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.